alive and alert on the north side of the dirt. It is your man, D-Real. Coming at you with another Be Real with D-Real, where entertainment explains it. We gonna be doing Philadelphia, number five by the Rodney Barnes and Mr. Jason Alexander. But before we do that, let's do what we need to do so we can do what we want to do. Comment, like, subscribe, and share the Be Real with D-Real page so that new material comes out. You get it. If you're digging with a brother, show to put some dirt in my bucket. Comment, like, subscribe, and share because entertainment is what I do. And what I'm going to do is get into Philadelphia number five. The sun will rise, or as I like to call it, what goes on from dusk till dawn. And here's dawn in Philadelphia. Carnage, chaos, dead bodies, burning corpses, dogs and cats living together, Total hysteria. <laughs> Just like Bill Murray said in Ghostbusters. Yeah, when you have these supernatural events, that's what's going on. And we see a young lady crying for Brittany, who we know to be a vampire. More on that story in a minute. Right now, though, we're seeing all the vampires going to bed because it's dusk. Even J John Adams himself, he got to lay down. They are, he's excited about taking over Philadelphia. He will sleep well today because his plans have gone the way they were supposed to. Vampires came out of everywhere and ate everybody up. And here we are. We're at a press conference where Lieutenant Zimmerman, the Sangster's lieutenant at their police department, is having a news conference with Mayor Gaskins, who we know is a crap heel of a mayor because he's in cahoots with John and Abigail Adams to make all of this go on. So reporters are asking questions and they are actually telling people It was a terrorist attack. A terrorist attack? A terrorist. Folks getting their throats ripped out, their heads pulled off, dismembered is a terrorist attack. Mm, I agree. That is terrible. And there is one extremely skeptical reporter who has issue with what Mayor Gaskins and Lieutenant Zimmerman is saying. And real OGs, if you look real close, you can see that there is none other than Carl Kolshak from TV's Night Stalker. There's going to be a lot of these crazy cameos. Rodney Barnes does not explain how or why these cameos come together, but from what I can see, everything, everything in Rodney Barnes' mind is one big connected universe. Television, movies, cartoons, all that. That makes for a very interesting world as far as what you can and what you can't do. It sounds like there isn't anything you can do in the world of Philadelphia or anybody you can't come across. Think I'm lying? Stick with me, man. You're going to see... I ain't going to give it up. I'm just, I, let's take you to this really cool looking piece of art. That's James Sangster Sr. asleep. And in his dreams, he dreams of heaven and hell. Angels above, demons below. I, I guess that's, that's, that's about the best way I can think of. I mean, art is interpretive. I'm going to leave that up to y'all. What do y'all think that symbolizes? And here we are at dusk. And Tevin Tompkins, 
aka Seesaw and James Sangster Sr. are together. And James Sangster, I mean, and, and, and Tevin is telling him about how he had a dead end life and he was approached by John Adams and John Adams turned. After John Adams turned him, John Adams gave him a book and told him not to open the book, but it had to be deciphered. Come to find out, that book had magic in it. Ooh, that's interesting. Meanwhile, Jose and Junior have went to Lieutenant Zimmerman, and they are straight up telling him, bruh, that wasn't no terrorist attack. That was a vampire invasion. And he like, what? What you talking? Yeah, my daddy's one. You got to come over to my house. Uh, we we need to show you some stuff. And here, Brittany wakes up, sleeping with Abigail. I don't know. That's that's weird. And it's weird on a couple different levels. But anyway, Brittany got some family business to attend to. And she don't need Abigail to do it, to, to come with her, to, to, to take care of her business. <laughs> Moving on. Tevin is showing uh senior, bruh, I got this down. I know what's going on in this book. I want to be able to use it effectively. And it seems like he can to me. And he tells Senior about how the book called to him. And when he stopped trying so hard and just let it flow, it started flowing. And he doesn't know what Adams knows, but he knows that book is the key to a lot of stuff. Ring, ring. Ring, 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 ring. Who could that be? We'll find out here in a second because now we see Brittany is going to visit sister. That is Brittany's sister. Seesaw turned her from a vampire back into a human. So now, basically, Brittany's sister is over 150 years old. Boy, Black, really don't crack. Do it. But we know from looking at Brittany's eyes, she's still a vampire. And here they are going over all of the stories and, it, you know, their origin in pictures basically looks like, oh, they ran into Abigail Adams and Abigail Adams turned them both into vampires. Yep, that sucks. But she got turned back. She don't want to be a vampire no more. But Brittany doesn't want her to stay human because Brittany knows she'll eventually die. She doesn't like it. And so her sister's not changing her mind. She's like, I'll watch over you in the daytime, but I'm I'm not going back out for that blood sucking stuff no more. I'm done with that, sis. And I mean, I can't blame her. I mean, immortality that way seems kind of kind of hard to deal with. Difficult to deal with. Impossible, even. You know, look at her. She's crying blood over it. Lieutenant Zimmerman comes in, sees Sangster, pulls his gun, recognizes Tevin. It's like, it's okay, bro. It's okay. Junior tells him, it's all right. It's all right. Calm down. Calm down. We good. We got you. And they break the situation down to him and tell him, bro, President John Adams is behind this. What the? F I mean, think about it. It's vampires running all over the city. And if the people you trusted the most came to you and said, hey, man, President John Adams is doing this, bro. What? 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 More on that story as it develops. He accepts it. He's like, all right, what we going to do? How do we kill them? Flamethrowers. All right, let's go do it. And 
Junior Tell Senior, step outside. Me and you need to talk for a second. And it isn't the kind of conversation you think it's going to be. He basically kind of just talks to him and says, you know, one of the reasons why I was treating you the way I was treating you is because when mom died, you know, they was both going through some stuff. But now he realizes it don't matter right now. This could be the apocalypse. So we need to put all of that BS behind us and move forward. Father and son doing what we need to do to take care of this situation. Meanwhile, Brittany's on the way back and she sees some cops and she's like, F it. I'm getting ready to take my frustrations out on these police. And that is precisely what she does. Like I said, Blood Hood ain't got nothing on Philadelphia. You want to see some red label action? Red label action is going down every month in Philadelphia. What? Look at that. She's gutting cops and ripping their heads off until she's satisfied. And that's how it goes down in Philadelphia, dang near every issue. So you need to go spend five, six, seven, eight, ten, twenty dollars to see all of this blood and gore under a red label. You could have just picked up Philadelphia. Back issues of Philadelphia, I might add. Well, now you know. And heading out to kill vampires and handle their vampire business, look who's spying on them. Uh-oh. Seesaw the unturned Benedict Arnold. We's going to have to deal with his behind. And that is how it went down in issue five of Philadelphia. Now, now that they have the somewhat have the police department behind them, they just need to properly arm them and maybe they could launch some kind of decent offensive against the vampires. Meanwhile, Seesaw done at least migrated to the side of the angels for now. We don't know what he's going to do later on. And his people's done seen him. And so now they're out for dare I say it, blood, pun intended. Yeah, yeah, that's what's going on. So y'all don't want to miss what's going on in issue six of Philadelphia. Uh, it sounds like it's going to be some hell to pack. That's it for now, y'all. But fret not, I will be coming at you with another one of the mother ones in it till I do. Yo, y'all, be good. Be good to each other. <laughs>